night. And speaking of the CFL, I can you say legendary when you say Ryan Thalwell? Legendary, uh, one of, not one of many, uh, or collectively one of many? <laughs> Ryan Thalwell, uh, former BC Lion and Calgary Stampeder. Mr. Richards, my friend. Oh, so great. Here, just bring that thing in. Thanks so much. Great seeing you. Always a pleasure to see you. Oh, it's been way too long. Yeah, it has been too long. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things we can uh, talk about. But, you know, I'm looking at last night's game and uh, the CFL. And, and a couple of, in the last couple of years, I got a little nervous because I see a lot of flags. Yeah. I see the game slowing down way more than I want. So, you know, like any offensive uh, you know, coach is going to tell you, a coordinator, I'm, you're not seeing that rhythm. It's yes. hard to play offense when there's challenges and flags. Yep. But this year, somehow, every stinking game is like within three, four points of each other, and it doesn't really matter what the standings are. It feels like it's kind of up for grabs every night. Yeah, it, it's been exciting, that's for sure. Now, I, I got to, as a, as a wide receiver, you would think I'd be uh, a fan of, you know, because the, the offensive players seem to be getting a lot, lot more freedom, but... I'm not a fan of, of all the flags and all the, the challenges. Uh, you know what? I'm a big believer. and Maybe I'm old school. You, you play it. There's going to be clutching and grabbing on every play, right? So to slow the game down and let's go back and take a look, you can pretty much throw a flag on every play. So that, that aspect of the game I don't enjoy, but yeah. you're right. It, it has. Games are close. And I guess that's what uh, fans want to see. Well, they do want to see it. And, and as you said, you know, I think that, and, and I've said it this week, we talked to Rob Maver, uh, Bruce Covington came in, yeah. and I said, you know, instead of coaches looking all over the field trying to find something, yeah. maybe on the way or the other side of the field or whatever it is, I'm like, I think, and I still believe this, that you've got to concentrate on your officiating, maybe pay them more, train them better, whatever yeah. happens to be, and then at the end of the day, you have to say, and I, this is how I always played sports with, is, is that official, that referee, we're both playing with them. Yes. So he's either making some good calls or making some bad calls, but yeah. we're both playing with the same guy. And that was just part of the understanding of athletics. Yes. That you, you have to go with that. When you start saying, nothing I'm saying get rid of replay, or, or, you know, there's an isolated shot, the ball's going to you, yeah. and, and, and they may want to challenge something there. I get that part. Yep. But look into the other side of the field. Dave Dickinson did it like <laughs> in Montreal. And I thought, Dave, come on. Uh, there was a couple of times when I said yeah. the exact same thing. I thought about texting him. Dave, come on, man. You're, what are you doing? <laughs> But, yeah, you know what? What's wrong with the old judgment call by the refs? And you just live with it and you move on, right? Yes. Like, there's so many camera angles, so many cameras nowadays that, you know. You can find, as you, you can can find, find someone it. every play if you want. So, for me, it's just, like I said, I'm, I'm old school. I'm, you know what? Make a call. Yeah, you're going to be upset. Guys are going to be frustrated. You know, refs are going to be villains. And, but that's just the part of the game. I, I don't have an issue with it. Well, as I said, this year, I think, and, and tonight, uh, the BC Lions, uh, Edmonton Eskimos, uh, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, good game. Yeah, you got, uh, and, and, and Travis Lule, I mean, having the luxury that that's the guy that comes off the bench, because you're still pretty close with guys in BC, are you not? Sorry? You're still pretty close with some of the oh, guys gosh, in BC. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, talked to, uh, I talked to G. Roy quite a bit. I uh, had a chance to visit with Wally a couple of months ago when I was back out in BC. So more guys on the coaching staff. Yeah. More so than the players, right. but but yeah, I do. I still follow BC quite a bit. You turn it on, and someone said, it was, it was an American guy, and he's like, is that Clemson? <laughs> they look at the BC Lions' new, new, new uniforms. I'm like, no, it's not Clemson. No, it's the BC Lions. I kind of like those unis, though. I do yeah. like them. I think it's a good look. I, I like them. And yeah. you know what? I got to give credit to the Lions. Like Even you know, back in the day when I was playing, every year they seem to come out with something new. Where they, you know some of the teams will will switch to their traditional or keep to their traditional. Yeah, I like some of the looks. I like their new uniforms that they brought out this year. To me, it's you know you got to get those young fans interested, and, and and uniforms are a part of it, unfortunately. So we're in conversation with Ryan Thelwell here on RawMikeRichards.com. Also watching on the dedicated YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the little red button at the bottom that says subscribe. It's the easiest way to see it. Uh, football and the way people always talk about um, changes in the game, and I said, well, to me. The biggest change is the fact that on the legal side of things, yes. when it comes to player safety, and once the NFL players got together and said, hey, 
you know, we believe that we weren't fully educated or that, you know, the concussion issues that we have seen a lot of things for player safety change that game to back in the NFL. It's like, well, there really aren't any kick returns anymore because yes. they're just going to kick it through the end zone because of, because of player safety. Yeah. How far does this go, do you think? We see how, how, how far we go with protecting the quarterback, and I start getting this feeling like when I see boxing, when I see UFC, we just know what concussed athletes go through. Yes. Do you think we get to the point where football is in danger of being the game that it was or is? Uh, do you know what? I've actually heard people questioning the longevity of the game, right? Just for that specific reason. Because it is. It's a contact sport, and, and guys are going to get hit. And, and you know, I, I know when I watch, you know, uh, NFL games or even CFL games, and sometimes, like, once again, the flags will go and the quarterbacks get touched. I, I get frustrated with it. But, you know, with that said, like, what do you do, right? It's, uh, it, I understand... Uh, uh, yeah. Guys are, are, are suffering, you know, once they're done mm -hmm. playing, and 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 you know, lawsuits are you know being tossed around. But you know, we go in knowing what the risks are. Now, were we as informed back then as we were as we are now? No, but you know, I know what I'm getting myself into. I know that there's going to be risks involved, and I, you know, it's it's, it's a contact sport. And, you know. and you're wired that way. The yeah. People say, you know, it's unfair. I go, trust me, if you play football, yep. you probably actually get physically excited the thought of hitting someone, hearing that crack of the plastic, yeah. doing a pit drill, whatever it happens to be. That's why you play it, because you like it. <laughs> and it's just, it's just a natural reaction, yeah. right? That You get that adrenaline flowing, and, you know, you're, you're running around, and bullets are flying. That's just your natural reaction. The, uh, the history of, of <laughs> Ryan Thalwell, which uh, I, I mean, sometimes I don't know if people understand just uh, what a cool story uh, you have. And uh, so you're in London, Ontario, right, originally? Yes. Correct. London, Ontario. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's good high school football there. It good is. high school football. Very good high school football. And one of, the, one of the few areas actually in Ontario where you can, you can say that. It's, it's yeah. tough to find. But where you go from there, I think maybe people don't know about, because for a Canadian, that's a pretty big jump. So you have a choice of how many schools coming out of London. Who, who are looking at you to, in terms of scholarships? Yeah, so I had, I had three. So I know I went on a visit to, with Iowa State. I uh, was offered a scholarship uh, with the University of Hawaii. And that's one of their one of those where they want you to commit before they bring you out on that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, on we that get the free trip to Hawaii. Could, yeah, but you know what? It, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't my, it's too far. Yeah, you know, I wanted to that be a little bit far. closer to home. And uh, there was like also Northern Illinois along with Minnesota. Northern Illinois, sure, yeah. yeah, the Huskies. Huskies, very good school. But I, I, I ultimately chose University of Minnesota because of the conference, you mm -hmm. know, big the Big Ten. Uh, you know, we were in a powerhouse, you know, back in, back in those days, but it was still one of the top conferences uh, down in the NCAA, and we had maybe two or three games a year that were close to my hometown, you know, Michigan, Michigan State. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was uh, uh, one of the big reasons why I decided to go there. Who, who did you play with at that time that the people would know watching here today at that time? You know, either against, on, or, uh, against or with? Who, oh, who? It, that was back in the day. So my very first game at the University of, of Minnesota, so I didn't play. Uh, we played Penn State. So this would have been, what, 94, 95. And this is the year, their first year in the Big Ten. And uh, I believe they were co-national championship champions that year. So they had, uh, you look at Jana Carter, uh, Kerry Collins, uh, Bobby Ingram was there. And you're seeing you're seeing Joe Paul. You're seeing Joe Paterno on the side. Oh, Paterno! I wanted to go get an autograph. Yeah, I, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? That's, that's, that's honestly, I know. We like growing up in London, like our our high school team was based on the Penn State. Like our uniforms were the exact same as Penn State's. Yeah, classic My, gold. Oh yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Our, our head coach was a big <laughs> Penn State fan, so we that's what we saw growing up. So it was pretty cool. I got to play against some pretty good players. You know, we, geez, Eddie George. Uh, oh, oh gosh, uh, Mike Allstott. Uh, oh but man, what I'm it's, saying, it's you know to go from London, Ontario to to that yes. is is significant. Now, when you finish, so you go as a senior, you did four years. Yes. Okay. Uh, I wish they still did four years. I know there's a huge argument, but I, 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 you know, at that point, I think you you become a man. I think you you've grown in your body physically. There's yep. a there's a maturity that I comes agree. with the four years. Uh, instead of uh, well, that guy last night getting his leg getting shot in Miami, at a club. I'm like, come on! Yeah. I mean, that's what happens when you when you play I one agree. or two years. You're still children. Um, 
So what are the choices that you have come out of school, out of uh, Minnesota? So uh, once, I, once I was finished, you know, I, I did pretty well. Like I was uh, like second team, all Big Ten, but, you know, wasn't quite sure if I was going to get drafted. Uh, I knew if I did, it would pro- most likely be on that second day. So, you know, four to, to seven. So I did get an invite to the NFL Combine, which, which is a pretty neat experience in itself. And, you know, went through that process and you know, spent draft day at home. I had a bunch of buddies come over and, you know, local no- news station came by, sure, and, yeah. which was a little bit uh, stressful because you don't know if you're going to get drafted. And all these people are here at this house, you know, for me. And, but uh, Ryan? He's crying. Actually, one <laughs> of the washroom, I think he's crying. <laughs> I think I was a couple of times. It was neat. You know, I got the call from, from Dwight Clark, and uh, it was a pretty neat experience. And, and to go through that process was pretty fun. NFL Combines, was it intimidating? Very intimidating. It's, it's, it's a job interview on steroids. <laughs> People have no idea what that, what that process is like. And, and, you know, you go in... Uh, you do an interview with you know maybe six or seven teams, and they've got their entire staff there. You you're, you go through, you see pretty much every single medical staff, and they're poking and prodding, and they know everything about your history from the time you're in high school through university. So it it was pretty intimidating, but uh, I guess that's what they want to see. They want to stress you out, sure. to see how you you react. So I, I enjoyed the process. So you get a couple of invites, and and, and what leads you to the CFL? Eventually, how do we see Ryan Thawell? Well, I, uh, during that same time, uh, you know, I did get drafted by the 49ers, but I was also drafted by the BC Lions in the same year. So they, they held my rights. You know what? I had to give the NFL my shot. So uh, that's You have I did. to. Yeah, you have to. So I went through. I, I you know, spent, spent my first uh, training camp with the 49ers and spent a couple of years on and off the practice roster with the San Diego Chargers. Spent a little time with the Steelers on the active roster, which was which was pretty neat. Was so th- that San Diego period? Is yes. that the Doug Flutie at that point? No. So this was the Ryan Leaf period. Oh, the, oh boy. Uh, we were dra- yeah. That was my draft year. It was uh, ninety eight. So we had Ryan Leaf and uh, Peyton Manning. So wow. we had the best defense in the league yeah. and the worst offense in the league. <laughs> <laughs> BC Lions, and that's why. So G Roy and you have been pretty tight ever since. G Roy is one of my best friends. Yeah. I, I consider him family, and uh, you know he's my brother. So, yeah, he's, uh, that's my boy. We, yeah. we came in together and, uh, you know. Uh, but I believe even he believes he's a pretty good player. Oh, yeah, gonna... if you were to ask Juroy, <laughs> he, he would hesitate to tell you that he's a pretty good player. He'll let you know. But that's what makes him special. Yeah, he, he's, I mean, great for the league in having that. Then eventually you get to Calgary. Yes. And now Calgary is your home. Yes. We, we, we made the move. Uh, my wife. Uh, my family of four now, which I've got to say something really quick. Yeah, four? You didn't know that. No, I did not. You are, you are a man of legend in the Thalwell household. Uh, I, I, oh, gee. I, Be- because oh, my I, kids, hope it, I hope it's a good reason. Because my kids think, do you think I'm a permanent uh, member of the Madagascar <laughs> s- staff? <laughs> so we still got that song going. I let them move it, move it. <laughs> Ryan Thalwell, let them move it, move it. <laughs> People are like, do you, isn't that racist what you're doing? <laughs> Why? Why is everything racism? It's not racist. It's just a song. I shoved his name in there. <laughs> he let him move it, move it. I was like, okay, fine. Whatever. Well, the kids loved it. Yeah, well, the good. The kids loved it. That's so. good. Well, and one of the reasons I also want to talk to you today is, uh, you know, uh, our good friend uh, Jeff Stewart yes. with DKI Canada. And I believe, uh, Russell, do we have the logo? Is it finally... It's like, what, one millimeter big? I mean, could they find it on there? <laughs> uh, but but uh, very good friends and uh, supporters of uh, rawmikerichards.com. Explain to people what DKI is and your association with that company. Yes, so DKI stands for Disaster Cleanup International. And they're a national uh, entity. So I'm with Rocky Cross Construction DKI. So we're local to Calgary, Rocky Cross DKI. But we are a member of the the larger larger organization. So for what we do, we're we're a full-service emergency restoration uh, provider. So, uh, well, when you say emergency, and and just so people understand, the moment I heard about the devastation in yes. Fort Mac, I thought, well, there they go because that's what they do for a living. It's it's when things are at its worst, and we and and that's exactly right. That's what we do. We we had a uh, Jeff did a great job. Uh, Jeff Stewart uh, mobilizing our crew for for Fort Mac. So we had we had our presence there. Um, what was we, that like? 
What was that? You know, like? I didn't get a chance to go. Okay. Uh, I know that um, we had several project managers that were up there. Our owner, Al Welton, was up there, and he was up there for a couple of months. It was all hands on deck. You know, in times of need, that's really what it comes down to is, you know, you set stuff aside and it's all hands on deck. So I know just from hearing stories from the guys that were up there, uh, you really had to see it to believe it. You it know, didn't TV, look real. It didn't it, look real it, on it, television. You know, I, we, we watch it on TV and we actually had some remnants of smoke, you know, coming sure from did. Fort Mac. Yeah. And, and I can only imagine what the people of Fort Mac have, have been through and you got to give them credit. They're a resilient bunch of people, and, and I see what they've done to support what's going on out in B.C. right now with the wildfires. Well, and so people understand here uh, that if you're on the East Coast, um, we don't have like a weather report, for instance, where, where the, the, the weather guy is going to come on and say, Smokey. Mm -hmm. So we years ago when I lived here, uh, David Spence, our good friend, at the CTV affiliate here in uh, Calgary, I heard him say, uh, tonight, blah, 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 and Smokey. So I saw him the next day. I went up to him and I said, David, um, you know, b being from the Toronto area, I'm, I'm not familiar with Smokey. What is that? He goes, well, when something burns, <laughs> you get smoke. And if you get smoke, then it'd be Smokey then, wouldn't it? <laughs> what a prick. Damn you, Spence. And that we are seeing from Kamloops. Yes. And that's currently where your company, once again, they have be yeah. Back in the cars, and away you go. We're there, you know. Jeff Stewart's out there right now, and he's got uh, our group mobilized, and we're, we're ready to pitch in when when needed. So, it really is all hands on deck, and and all the members from across Western Canada, we come together and we do what we can to support. If it's you know passing out water bottles, then it's passing out water bottles. If it's if it's helping folks, you know, uh, have their houses. Uh, to cleaned or, or whatever they ask of us that we're there to provide that service. So. And what I also find, uh, I mean, again, this is the, you talk about real resiliency. I, I, you know, I sometimes take a look at the people in the province of Alberta because they're just you know, very special to me, but they're, they're kind of special to everybody because I heard that members and, and citizens of Fort McMurray started volunteering to go down to Kamloops yes. and help them because they've been through it already. Well, because they've seen it firsthand. They've been through it firsthand like they people had to leave their homes on a, on a last minute notice so uh, they know what the people of, of the interior of bc are going through so like i said uh, they're a resilient group of people and and they were the first to, to hey what can we do to help and you know let's just pack up let's head out there and let's do what we can do to pitch in so you know, that's the beauty about you know alberta in general i find that we have very generous people here and you know, it's 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 that Alberta mentality, yeah. right? So well, it's, signs. Are you seeing signs uh, down uh, well uh, Highway Two, or you know, you can stay here, li <laughs> live with us. I'm yeah. like, that ain't happening, in Toronto. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> you know, I, I think you see signs. Get off my land. I think that's what you see. <laughs> and, that, and that's what you did. We we got a lot of that. I know uh, my wife and I even talked about because we had friends, uh, really close friends, who lost their home in in Fort Mac. DKI, their members in Fort Mac, the owner of the, the location in Fort Mac, they lost their house. They were in I Toronto. Yeah, they were in Toronto at a, a DKI meeting when the news came out, you know, what was going on in Fort Mac and the evacuation. They lost their house. So, you know, like I said, once again, we, we've got members within our own organization that have been through it and seen it firsthand. So that's why we're, we're here. Well, it's great. We're uh, happy to talk about uh, DKI because they've done a wonderful job and obviously been uh, very supportive of me here on rawmikerichards.com. Uh, boy, Ryan, uh, it's so nice to uh, see you. And my son still talks about it, right? He's like, oh, are you going to see Ryan? I go, you live here, son. You can see him anytime you want. i got to get on a plane. I know. I, you know what? That's my fault. I've got to reach out. And I knew, I knew he was out here, and I knew he'd, he was, you know, I, I know you had a hard time letting him go. We, yeah, we, we had, yeah we, when I threw him on a plane, said, see you later, do something. <laughs> But like I said, you, I just got to say it, it, we miss you out here. It, it hasn't been quite the same. I know that, uh, you know, when I moved from Vancouver to Calgary, you're one of the reasons that I, I started listening. You know, we always, as athletes, we were, we were put on with the, with the sports, you know, broadcasters. Right. And we had to do it because that was a part of our job. But you really got me listening in the morning. And you put a smile on my face. And, you know, it was, we were sad when you left. And I was excited. I shot yeah. you an email when, yeah. I, when I found out you were going to be here. So, 
We miss you. Yeah, it's great. I'll be back uh, every three months and uh, look forward to it and hopefully uh, see you much more of, of you, Ryan. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Take care. Pleasure. What an awesome man. That is uh, Ryan Thelwell, one of my favorites, and quite frankly, everyone else's as well, and now working with uh, DKI and his uh, company, actually, RCCN. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep.